Turkey, all the barahunde. I love languages, and ever since I did a breakdown of Ubi's from Return of the Jedi, I wanted to tackle another Star Wars language, and turns out that Geonosian is a perfect candidate. In the absence of canonical information on this topic, I came up with my own vocabulary, grammar, and cultural context for virtually all of the spoken Geonosian in Attack of the Clones. So sit back and relax as I take on the role of a xenolinguist, and attempt to make sense of this seemingly bizarre language and the cultural connotations behind it. With all these trills, clicks, and buzzes, things can feel overwhelming at first, but when you start to break down the language, its grammatical structure becomes clear, and we find that these words are not so difficult to pronounce after all. Humans should really have no trouble understanding and speaking Geonosian. Even an observer with no knowledge of the language can watch a Geonosian and a human conversing and see that properly educated individuals can effortlessly understand each other. Now, we don't have a whole lot to go off when it comes to studying the language, but you would be surprised just how much we can gather from the samples we have. So here are the romanizations. I've used apostrophes to indicate clicks. And I've also capitalized to illustrate stresses, which are very important to the pronunciation. But let's just take things one line at a time. <laughs> the official translation for this line is settle down, settle down. We see this rowdy crowd of inhuman insectoids, and we think of a mindless rabble engaging in barbaric animalistic entertainment. But in Geonosian culture, these gladiatorial matches have deep cultural and religious significance. And as such, Poggle's line here is more formal than it comes across in the subtitles. He starts off with that loud trilling sound. <laughs> A single, isolated trill in Geonosian isn't easy to translate into English because its meaning isn't really clear. Simply put, these trill sounds are used to get the attention of an audience. They're a call to listen. And this happens in other languages, even fairly close to home. For instance, in the Old English epic poem Beowulf, the very first word is what, which has been translated in the past as so, which even we in modern English use. For instance, so let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. The so doesn't really mean anything. It's really just signaling to your listener, hey, I have something to tell you. Another way to look at this sound could be simply how we theatrically clear our throats before making a grand statement. This merely manifests itself as a trill in the Geonosian language. So that leaves us with <laughs> We're actually only looking at two ideas being expressed here. Quiet do means silence, and ak ai means talking. An important note here is almost all Geonosian words have broad applications. There are virtually no synonyms in the language. So for things like talking, discourse, conversation, communication, ak ai will do just fine. Of course, in context, quiet do is all we really need here. Ak i.e. is somewhat redundant. Simply saying, silence, is probably enough, but Poggle the Lesser is speaking formally here, remember, and silence alone would be fairly rude to his audience. So a more faithful translation that includes the nuance of the speech might be something along the lines of, listen, and let your speaking be silent. Translating this line as settle down, settle down, fails to capture the more lofty mood of the line, which is further reinforced by the clicks that Poggle finishes the sentence with. This high-low click pattern is a common Geonosian form of spoken punctuation that adds gravity and, in this case, theatrical suspense to what Poggle is saying. The next line is... This is translated as let the executions begin. Here again, we have the same trill sound, which of course you remember is a paralinguistic call for the attention of the audience. The rest of the sentence is we all the barahunde. Gui means now, or in some cases to begin, or furthermore, when paired with a verb, can mean is currently occurring. Odi means watch or witness or behold. The final word is barahunde. The filmmakers have chosen to translate this word as the executions, which goes back to that somewhat unflattering view of Geonosians as barbarous, animalistic monsters. In reality, this word doesn't really have a good translation into English. It's a proper noun and is perhaps more correctly left untranslated. The barahunde is a festival of ritual combat, and the so-called execution of prisoners at the beginning of the barahunde is seen as both a sacrifice to Geonosian 
deities, as well as a last chance at mercy. Prisoners who, by divine intervention or through supernatural skill, can survive the Barahunde are given their freedom. And when Count Dooku sends in the droids after the prisoners have proven their skill, he has in fact committed a pretty serious social taboo. At any rate, a more acceptable translation for this line, Barahunde, would be more along the lines of Behold the Barahunde. Let's go on to the next line. Interesting. If you've been paying attention, we actually know all of these words. Akai means talking or communication. Gui means now or to begin or is occurring. And Kwaeto means silence. So in short, communication is becoming silenced. As Geonosian is a flexible language that relies heavily on context, it's understandable that Poggle has completely omitted the word our in this sentence. And as we learned before, Geonosian words have many applications, so they don't differentiate between silenced and jammed as it pertains to communications, at least in common speech. <laughs> The film translate this line as, we have to order a retreat, which is a fairly good translation, but it misses a bit of the subtlety. For instance, is an expletive that I will not translate, and in my defense, the film did not translate either. So the sentence actually starts with, which in this case means, we must command, though the we is implied. Means immediately everyone retreat. In this sentence, immediately everyone retreat is in its entirety acting as the object of the sentence. So if we wanted to translate the nuance of the original Geonosian, we might write the line this way We must issue this command. Everyone retreat immediately. Which of course sounds like a really inconvenient way to say, we have to order a retreat, but most of the unnecessary bulk is trimmed in Geonosian anyway, making this particular word formation no more or less unwieldy than it is in English. Moving on, we have a pretty sparse sounding line for how much is being communicated. But a lot of this translation is context that Poggle clearly doesn't believe is necessary. Here's the line transcribed for you to follow along. Notice how I didn't transcribe this sound. That's because these buzzing sounds aren't language at all, but are instead the sounds of Geonosian's breathing. Poggle is getting on in years, and his breathing is somewhat labored. At any rate, this is the sentence we have. Un oi i yast ko. Un oi means me, myself, or I. But if you remember, Geonosian has a habit of completely dropping this sort of thing from a sentence. So what's it doing here? Well, the clue is that this word only means me, myself, and I in a very unilateral sense. If I'm saying I'm going to the store, of course I would leave off I in Geonosian. But if I were to say I forbid you to go to the store, I might just say un oi. We can also tell that this is a word of importance because of the double click that ends it. Remember before how double clicks were used to add importance. The rest is very straightforward. E means to go, yast means warriors, and kul means underground. But wait a second, that doesn't sound particularly grammatical. I go the warriors underground. It only sounds weird to us because in English, go is not the sort of verb that you can do to somebody else. And it's not typically the case in Geonosian either, but the fact that Pongol used that formal form of I creates the mood of a command to the entire sentence. The last two lines require a bit of a disclaimer, as the official translation breaks up the actual lines in a way that makes more sense for the movie, but doesn't quite match up with what Poggle is saying in Geonosian. For instance, in this line, we are led to believe that he refers to the Death Star. <laughs> But in reality, he doesn't mention it until the next line. But you'll see what I mean soon enough. So this line is Poggle calls the Jedi which means sword enemies, which can be interpreted as something of an insult, as other Geonosian compound nouns that use this word often refer to pirates and bandits and not noble members of a respected order. Poggle clearly doesn't have much respect for the Jedi. The remaining words of the sentence are Notice the double K in seek. It's not seek, it's seek. This is pretty easily translated as find cannot or cannot find, though an o is more of a negative verb suffix than it is a full word. 
So this sentence, more directly translated, means the sword enemies cannot find this. And the object this is omitted as Poggle is standing directly under the hologram of the Death Star and feels that the object of the sentence is properly implied. Now onto the final sentence. <laughs> This is actually two separate phrases that we can tackle one at a time. The first is simply Ohri Potekopoka, which literally means use huge weapon weapon. Scholars also debate that Ohri can also mean to take because the word has the connotation of taking something and using it as one's own. Poggle isn't merely worried that the Republic will find the weapon, but that they will themselves use it, which of course turns out to be somewhat prophetic. Polteco means a large weapon in a very literal sense, like a big club. And polka means any weapon in any sense of the word. The Genogens calling the Death Star a huge weapon weapon might not exactly sound eloquent when it's first translated, but the Genogens see this so-called ultimate weapon as two distinct entities. The mere size and awe-inspiring presence of the Death Star and what it represents is itself a weapon, a polka. To subjugate the masses, it hardly even needs to fire its huge planet-destroying weapon, its poteco. So the Death Star isn't just a weapon or a polka, and it's not just a super laser or a poteco. It's a poteco polka. It's a huge weapon weapon. And the way poteco polka simply rolls off the tongue just sounds good. I'm sure the Geonosians were disappointed when they heard what the humans were calling it. So that's ohri poteco polka, which doesn't seem to mean much on its own. But what about the rest? The rest is urka kurkas im i urka, and it's connected to the first bit by this little word kika, which means therefore, with an implied if applied to the first phrase. Urka kurkas means very death us. Up to this point, we're looking at a translation like this. If the huge weapon weapon is taken from us and used against us, we are very dead. The final bit, im i urka, doesn't really have a good translation, but it makes what he's saying sound something like a prayer or more like a prophecy from on high. Something like Amen on the more respectful side and God help us on the theatrical side. Notice too how Poggle is trilling again. <laughs> These words don't normally have these trills, and the function of trilling to draw extra attention to what is being said would also seem to suggest that he's putting on some theatrics here. So that's a translation of just about all the Geonosian we get to hear, with some historical and cultural context as well. Of course, this is all basically fan fiction, so take it with a grain of salt. But now, when you watch Attack of the Clones, you can make sense of everything that Poggle the Lesser is saying, and now you can talk right along with him. With a little practice, Geonosian isn't so hard to understand and speak after all. So I hope in time we can all ak'ai in Geonosian together. I hope you guys liked this extremely obscure deep dive into Star Wars. And if you liked this video, be sure to check out the video that I did on Ubi's in Return of the Jedi, where I try to make sense of the lines that Leia speaks as the bounty hunter Boosh. If anything, it's even more technical than this video was, but I had a lot of fun with both and I would love to do more, so let me know what you think. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.